This week's episode is brought to you by the Disney Channel's latest smash hit TV show, Cat with a Chat. Room, uh, bumping other shows off the schedule left and right. <laughs> and I'm talking about you, Keith. Hello and welcome to Communicore Weekly, the greatest online show. I'm George. And I'm Jeff. And guess what? We got a great new contest for you guys. George, why don't you tell them what the prizes are? Ooh, the prizes are actually pretty awesome. We have got four Blu-ray sets that we're giving away. Uh, four different films, I guess we should say. Uh, we've got Howl's Moving Castle, My Neighbor Totoro, the Disney Parks Blu-ray set, and Disney Nature Oceans. All that, four on Blu-ray, and awesome. Yeah, that's an awful lot of content. So four lucky Communicore cadets are going to get four equally as awesome prizes, because I actually want some of those prizes. I even have some of those prizes already, but I want you these You still want them anyway? Yeah, because I'm greedy. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. I mean, you might you know need to pawn them or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you never know. I mean, just whatever. Or build a Blu-ray castle. Hey, I would love a Blu-ray castle. That'd be great. That'd be That'd be I can cool. hold so, four times as many content in my Blu-ray castle. <laughs> as somebody has a regular DVD castle. Yes, of exactly. Course, of course. So what we've got is we've got uh, one copy of each film. So we'll have four winners, and each winner will win one, and we'll still pick which film they get. So yeah, one I'm winner will get, get Hal, one winner will get Totoro. But tell them how they can win, Jeff. Well, this time around, we're, we're going to do things a little differently, and we have two different ways that you can enter. Now, the first way is you can leave us a review on iTunes for one entry. Now, some of you have already lift, left us reviews on iTunes. Some of you have left nine-star reviews on iTunes. That's <laughs> awesome. We like that. So whether you did or not already, just leave us a review on, on iTunes, and then be sure to email us at communicorweekly at gmail.com, your iTunes username, the date of the review, so we can go back and check it and make sure it's actually there. So you can do one new one, or you can send us an old review that you already did forever ago. That's fine. Either way, give us a review. That's fantastic. For another entry, refer a friend to like our Facebook page and have them post on the page, so-and-so sent me. Not, But not actually so-and-so sent yeah, me. Yeah, we'll get a lot of so-and-sos. Yeah, because if they write that, then we'll, we won't know who so-and-so is. So make sure they write exactly. your name and then sent me. Does it make sense? Yeah, and that way you and your friend both get an entry in the contest. Yes, and again, our Facebook page is facebook.com slash Weekly. So that's two easy ways to enter our contest, and you exactly. have a one in four chance of winning an awesome prize. I mean, they're all awesome. Wait, one in four chance. Say, yeah. Hang on a second. I don't think no. my odds are correct on that. No, those odds, wow, thank goodness you don't run the lottery. Ooh. We don't know what the odds are because we don't know how many people will enter. You have a but one have... in however many people enter chance. Yes. Yes. No, I'm yes. sorry. You have a four in however many people enter chance <laughs> because we have okay. four prizes. There's a reason that we don't do a weekly math podcast. Yes. We, we don't do... statistical analysis. This, is there a, a, a something in math that has to do with CommuniCore or something? I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I can't even think of any math terms except for like acute angle. We don't do Acute Angle Weekly. I'm sorry, guys. No, we just have Acute Co-Hosts Weekly. Oh, oh I, internet oh, high yeah. five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had my arms in the air, too, when I said that, so it was really embarrassing if anybody was watching. I don't think anybody was. So Anyway. Well, anyways, so, <laughs> so the contest, we've got the four different Blue Ways, which we, we'll post all the information at communicorweekly.com. So yes. So we have information up there. And the contest is going to run through... July 4th, because we are a very patriotic podcast. Yes, we are. So be sure to get both your entries in before July 4th, and good luck with your four and however many chance you have of winning. Oh, we're going to get in so much trouble. It's time for Disney History! You smell that? That's the sweet, sweet smell of tobacco. Coming out of right out of the pipe there. 
and that's coming from the tobacco shop right here on Main Street USA here at Disneyland. Now, if you forgot your supplies at home, don't worry. You can always buy tobacco and smoking accessories from all around the world here, according to Disneyland Guidebook. And as a souvenir of your day at the park, take home a handcrafted pipe or pouch of the finest tobacco, which of course, none of which feature Disney characters on them. So if you're looking for cigarettes, you've also come to the right place, even though you won't see them on display. The tobacconist keeps them hidden under the counter and has all of the popular brands in stock. And don't forget to take some complimentary tobacco shop matchbooks. You can sell them on eBay in about 50 years. Mm-hmm, making a killing. Now, speaking of making a killing, puff on that cigarette as you walk around the park. No one's gonna bother you. Who cares? Smoking may be prohibited on the attractions, but feel free to smoke away anywhere else that you want. Everyone else is doing it. Why shouldn't you? Much like the trash cans, there's ashtrays conveniently located at every entrance to every attraction. One problem though, guys, it isn't 1955 anymore, and none of what we just said is true. I'm sorry. Unless you have a time travel device. And if you have a time travel device, you're probably doing other things. Yes, and not smoking cigarettes and tobacco at Disneyland. Although I would, you know, going back to 1955 would be pretty I mean, cool. I think that would be neat. Yeah. Now, well, that's another show altogether. Well, so the, the tobacco shop opened in 1955 is one of the original shops on Disneyland's Main Street. And it was one of the main reasons that Main Street felt like a real American town around 1900. It was located between the Magic Shop and the Main Street Cinema on the east side of Main Street. Oh, can I interrupt you for a second? With well, the east side versus the west side? No, no, I, I think you meant to say the Illusion Shop, George. Oh, the Illusion, the illusion shop. shop. So it's not really there. You think it's there. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, well, Go fine. on. So between the Illusion Shop and the Main Street Cinema. Yes. Okay. Still on the east side, though, right? Sure. Okay, why not? Okay. Well, a traditional cigar store Indian stood in front of the tobacco shop on Main Street when the shop opened. And when the tobacco shop went away, the Indian stayed. You can still find him there today, sitting out in front of the former location of the shop. Well, I guess standing. Well, he's, yeah, he's standing there. He's standing. You realize I was at Arrested Development reference, correct? Yes, of course. Okay. I was going to start going, the final countdown. Do -do -do -do. Sorry. All right. So that's okay. <laughs> the, Mr. The, manager, you're sorry, but, uh, just it's just manager, buddy. Just just manager. <laughs> it, there's there's been a tradition of sh uh, cigar store Indians that goes back centuries back when a lot of the shops had visual signs instead of written ones because a lot of people didn't know how to read back in the day. So it, it was kind of a way to call attention to the goods and services available in the shop, even if the customer couldn't read or was a, re a recent immigrant who did not read English. And tobacco has long been associated with in, uh, Indians which uh, who introduced Europeans to tobacco. So while the symbols of other trades were attached to a shop's exterior wall, such as the scissors for a barber or boots for a shoemaker, a cigar, a cigar store Indian was a statue that stood on the sidewalk in front of a tobacconist shop. And by the late 19th century, the heyday of cigar store Indians ended as municipalities passed ordinances prohibiting them from blocking public sidewalks. Because when you're texting and walking, you're going to walk right into... One of those cigar store those Indians. Indians. Yeah. You got it. Now, Disneyland actually had two other cigar store Indians, uh, with the other in Frontierland, where he draws attention to the West Ho Trading Company, uh, right next to the um, the shooting gallery. Um, and in, in 1991, the tobacco shop on Main Street, it closed down permanently. And in its place, a new shop, uh, Great American Pastimes, which sold baseball cards and sports memorabilia, that was there until 1999. And then the 20th Century Music Company moved in, selling Disney CDs and videos, including CDs featuring Disney Entertainment. That's synergy, kids. That's amazing synergy, too. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, okay, if you're a smoker, you know it's a lot harder to smoke at Disneyland now than it was when the tobacco shop was operating. Indoor smoking is no longer allowed anywhere in Disneyland, and outdoor smoking is severely restricted to three small areas scattered throughout the park whereas California Adventure has five. Disneyland even stopped selling cigarettes themselves in late 1999. And downtown Disney allows smoking outdoors, but all of the Disneyland resorts are now 100% smoke free. The smoking restrictions are similar at the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. Now, in general, the Walt Disney Company has an aversion to smoking that isn't really limited to just the parks and resorts. 
In July in 2007, Disney became the first major movie studio to kind of restrict uh, depictions of smoking on screen. So new films that carry the family-oriented Walt Disney label show no smoking at all, and smoking is discouraged in films from Disney's more adult-oriented brands as well, so they're really anti-smoking. i cut that out, yeah. Disney has even gone so far as to go back and edit smoking out of some of its earlier cartoons, such as the 1948 feature Melody Time, where Pecos Bill was shown rolling a smoke. The cigarette was digitally removed from the rest of the scene, so unfortunately for you smokers out there, Disney is not a smoker-friendly company. It is not. Good thing is, I'm not a smoker. I was thinking more like the way you barbecue. Oh, I want this is something completely different. Well, they probably won't allow you to to smoke your your barbecue meat on property either. That's probably oh, illegal. Um, that's true, and you don't see that in a lot of animated films either. No, that's true. Now that you bring that up, maybe we're looking at this the wrong way. Maybe they don't allow that. In Gosh. their animated films, or in the, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna go to Disneyland and I'll bring a smoker, and I'll see if I can cook something up, and I'll, I'll see, report see back what to they you. Do. If I'm not arrested, I'll let you know. That sounds good. He's a nerd. He's a, nerd. He's a, geek. He's a geek. But we all like to hear him speak. So listen up to the words from his beat. Ah! It's George's book of the week. The book for this week is Reality Land by David Koenig. And Reality Land fills what I would consider a much needed void in the Walt Disney World literature. It's an unofficial look at the development and construction of Walt Disney World. Uh, the book follows the same formula as Koenig's Mouse Tales, except a lot of the space is devoted to the history and development of Walt Disney World. You know, whereas Mouse Tales really focuses on anecdotes about Disneyland instead of construction. So it's obvious that Koenig spent a lot of time talking to cast members, executives, and construction people from the early days. The first chapters are filled with anecdotes about the preview center, hiring the first cast members, and the rigors of developing the property. So he, he really offers an easy to read and compelling look at the overall development of, of Walt Disney World. The stars of the book are the individual cast members that Koenig was able to interview. He spoke to former executives that talked about the mishaps and the happy accidents. Uh, he talked to cast members that talked about the early years of working at Walt Disney World and with locals about the political machinations that took place. So Koenig really presents an intriguing view of how Walt, Roy, and Card Walker all dealt with the Florida project. There were a litany of undercover plans, political dealings, union issues, and theft. Uh, and as he moves through the timeline of the resort, Koenig presents the major issues and the milestones that each management needed to contend with, including the fuel crisis of the 70s, the question of where's Epcot and the expense of Epcot, which led to Card Walker's retirement, and the new management of, of Eisner and Wells, not Eisner, but Eisner. Uh, like mouse, mouse Tales, there were times when I laughed out loud and times when I wondered how in the world they got all of it done. Uh, as with his other books, he doesn't gloss over the negative side of Disney. He does cover the accidents that have happened over the years, and one of the final chapters is dev devoted specifically to Disney security. And I never felt that Koenig was really out to get anyone. He was just trying to present a fairly unbiased look at Walt Disney World. Uh, one time, or one story that stands out, he does try to dispel the myth of George, the ill-fated worker that's rumored to have died during the construction of Pirates, which we've talked about on the show before. Halloween so go episode. Back, go back and grab the Halloween episode because it's got a great theme song. Um, he does use official records to show when the first actual death happened at Walt Disney World, and he covers accidents, missteps, and the Disney Reedy Creek policy. Uh, as, I, as I often tell people when you read this book, you're going to have to remove your rose-colored mouse ears while reading Reality Land. So... Um, I would really surmise that the lack of information and focus about the development of the property after the Eisner Wells team took over is due to the author's one noticeable bias. He is not a fan of Eisner at all. He almost vilifies Eisner when talking about the creation of the Disney MGM Studios, and a lot of the more recent developments are really glossed over. Uh, the dearth of information about the most recent 15 years is the major drawback to the book. Uh, when, when thinking about the history that Koenig plays out, I was able to place a lot of the people and events that I had read about in other sources, uh, this time with much greater detail. Uh, I would hesitate to let this work stand as my only source on Walt Disney, uh, Walt Disney World. Since the world began by Jeff Curdy, Disney the first 100 years, and even the History Channel Modern Marvel's Walt Disney World DVD 
will help you get a really good history of the park itself. Uh, withstanding the, the last sections of the book, the first 200 pages alone are worth the price of the book. You will learn more about the development of the property and what it took to get the Walt Disney World Resort up and running. Uh, you'll never, ever again, this is a Communicore Weekly Guarantee, you will never disembark from the ferry or walk down the ramp from the monorail without thinking about how massive an undertaking the Walt Disney World really was before you read Reality Land. So once again, this is Reality Land by David Koenig. Uh, check it out. What we liked, what we didn't like, he's in the booze. 60 Second Review. So for this week's 60 Second Review, we're going to have to try to get it under fairly quickly because we've got two films to talk about. And the first one is the new Blu-ray release of Lilo and Stitch, the two-movie collection which includes the amazing and almost incomparable Lilo and Stitch, and then Stitch has a glitch. Which is not as amazing and not incomparable. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Now, let's get out of the way. Lilo and Stitch is an awesome movie. I love it. I've loved it since the moment I saw it. Your column at Mice Chat is named The 626, so I know you like I film. You know, for whatever reason, maybe it's because of his uh, attractions at uh, Walt Disney World now and his overplay in the theme parks, but Stitch gets a bad rap sometimes. Yeah. I think the movie is incredibly charming. I think mm -hmm. it's hilarious. I think it's perfect. Um, it's a great relationship that Lilo and Stitch form together, and then as a family, they become an ohana, which means family. So, Oh, I thought that meant all-you-can-eat breakfast. Uh, it does, but it's for a certain price, and usually oh. after one Tonga toast, I'm done. And that's all. Yeah. Okay. But gotcha. the movie's fantastic. I love yeah. that film. Looks great on Blu-ray, like you've heard us say a million times. Blu-ray is really... Animated films shine on Blu-ray. Absolutely. Absolutely it's, they do. You know, sounds great. The, the When I first heard all those years ago that they were using Elvis as a soundtrack, I was like, eh. But it works so well. Yes. It works so well. This, this film, I've always thought, is one of the most beautiful that Disney has put out, Lilo and Stitch, because the backgrounds are those soft almost watercolor and you know the highest compliment i can pay the film is that it's 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 as close to a miyazaki film as we're gonna see that's a very good Disney. compliment i think and very mm -hmm. apt as well very apt the and downside is yeah. lilo and stitch 2 <laughs> not a fantastic movie i'm no, sorry it's it's not it, it's it's like we're gonna see with some of the other releases they've done it's better than like cinderella 2 yeah because it still has a little bit more heart but, you know, they replaced uh, the young woman doing Lilo with the lady who does Satsuke from My Neighbor Totoro. So all the time I'm going, wait a minute, what am I watching? This is the wrong movie. This is the wrong movie. This is the wrong movie. But we were watching Lilo and Stitch, and I was like, oh, man, Lilo and Stitch remind me a lot of Calvin and Hobbes. They do. That's a very good comparison, too. Um, and I, I think you can see that comparison a lot better in the television show, which some of those uh, yeah. episodes weren't that bad. Um, hopefully we get those on DVD at some point. But oh, Yeah, um, hint, hint. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Um, yes. we got to move along, though, with this review. So I will say, um, if you don't own it on DVD already, pick it up so you can have both movies. Um, well, at least get Lilo and Stitch on Blu-ray. Yes, uh, because it looks fantastic. Unfortunately, there are no extras on the disc, which oh, is yeah. disappointing. None. Um, None. So maybe you should pick up the DVD Big Kahuna edition that came out two years ago, even though it doesn't look as good, but it has all the cool extras. That's good. Okay. Do it that way. So the, the next film was the major release last summer. Oh, no, this year. Sorry. I what year this is we're listening yeah, to. Yeah, I guess. It's, uh, <laughs> time travel. Time travel. Disney's Oz the Great and Powerful. And I did not see this in the theater. So but, I was but excited I did. to see this on Blu-ray, but you did. You did. I loved it in the theater. My my mother and I uh, went to go see it because she, this, this, my mother never wants to go see movies in the movie theater. But this one she wanted to see because she loves The Wizard of Oz. And we both thought it was fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, we picked a showtime that was a 3D showing, and we both hate going to see 3D showings. But <laughs> to be honest with you, the, the 3D didn't bother me in this movie. Um, it didn't take away from anything. The, uh, the story was fantastic. I loved it. And, you know, that's that. Yeah, it's it's sort of, I mean, what everybody said, it's a prequel to The Wizard of Oz. The Great Wizard actually comes to Oz. And, um, you know, it, 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 we learn about the witches. 
which I don't want to give too much away. I want people to watch it. Enjoy yeah, the you want to be good. surprised. I will yeah. say this, though. Directed by Sam Raimi, and I did notice that this was basically Army of Darkness, but with a much larger budget. <laughs> would you, would you have to have that, say that? I have to have that comparison. I didn't even think about it. That. It does remind me a lot, story structure of Army of Darkness and how things happen. That's sure. just me, though. That's um, pretty good, but... It, Tell us about it, the, the extras, George. What well, do you got? I was blown away by how gorgeous the film was. It was fun. And it has Mila Kunis in it and Michelle Williams. Need we say more? Need we say more. But anyways, um, the extras were fantastic. Uh, the weakest section of the whole episode, or the whole section, uh, the extras were the bloopers. They were funny, but not as much. Uh, James Franco does his own 20-minute segment where he interviews a lot of the cast members. Like, like a blog. It's Franco it's with like a blog. blog. It's Franco with a blog. <laughs> but he's not going to bump anybody up from a Disney Anna show. No, no, and he's um, way more entertaining. Way more entertaining than that. But he interviews people. They talk about what, what it took them to get to Oz, how they became part of it, uh, which is a lot because James Franco is a very smart man. He very, very smart very, man. Very, very smart man. Um, I enjoyed um, the little feature about Danny Elfman because I love yes. everything that Danny Elfman does. And having an interview with him, I thought really it really saw behind his mind uh, a little bit. Yeah. Um, final thoughts to wrap it up, George. Go. Well, I thought it was fantastic film. I was surprised. This is a definite purchase. It's gorgeous. So gorgeous. this one is two Communicore Weekly thumbs up. Yep. You got it. Excellent. Go out and buy them all, kids. Sometimes you might see it, sometimes you don't. Hey, look, what's that? It's a five-legged goat. <laughs> at the Enchanted Tiki Room at Walt Disney World, see, the top of the show building can be seen from both Adventureland and Frontierland. So if you look closely enough, you can see several animal sculptures along the top of the roof. The sculptures themselves are actually based on Asian water buffaloes to fit in with the tiki theme, but they look similar enough to the western longhorn to still work with the frontier land side of the, uh, the theme. Wow, so no matter where you're standing, there you, you still are. Get the, there you are. <laughs> I didn't know where we were going with that. I Anyways. didn't know either. But there was a pause, and then I jumped in, and I took it. That's okay. That's okay. We can do that. At least the people made it to the end of the show so far. Yes. And that's when we like to say thank you guys so much for watching and listening to us. Yeah, we really appreciate it. And remember, leave us a comment and rate us on iTunes, and then email us and tell us about it so you can enter in the contest. That's right. We've got those four great Blu-ray DVD sets that we're giving away. And you have to go back to the beginning of the show to listen to it if you want to know the rules again. Rewind. Listen to it again. Or download it again. Download so we it get again. More yeah, sure. One of those. Well, anyways. So, yeah, email us at communicorweekly at gmail.com and tell us that you left a review. Exactly. And also, like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash communicorweekly. Have your friends like us, too, and have them tell us that you sent them to our Facebook page to enter right. into the contest. That's like a referral, then. Yeah. Referral. Okay, good, 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 good. I was getting confused. I was wondering where you were going with it. I was like, wait a minute. Uh -oh. Referral is what is the word I should have used instead of all those other words that I was well, using. I was still worried we were going to get a so and so sent me. Yeah, so and so sent me. It's like, well, who's so and so? I hope, I hope so and so listens to the show. Uh, but anyway, so um, always follow us on Twitter. I'm at Imagine Nerding and he's at Jeff Heimbuck. And you can always tweet the reviews too. It doesn't give you an entry, but we'll still think you're really, really cool. Yeah, I, I'll think you're cool regardless because yeah, you're listening. Didn't. So thanks. Because you're listening to the show, and that's you know awesome. you, you. I'm talking to you. You know who I'm talking to. Yeah, that's right. It's you. Oh, you weren't pointing at me though. No, I wasn't pointing at you. Mostly because Gosh, you're, true. you know, on the other side of the country right now. So that's true. It's Nobody would see me. that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well. uh for Jeff Heimbuck, I'm George Taylor. And for George Taylor, I'm Jeff Heimbuck. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time on Communicore Weekly, the greatest online show. Transalore. <laughs>